Good evening. Welcome to our ICD Section 15 monthly webinar. And uh, tonight we have um, uh, a interesting topic and a speaker from Indonesia. And I will introduce our moderator today is Dr. Amy Emilia. Uh, she will uh, be the moderator and introduce the speaker. Amy, uh, it's all yours. Go ahead. Okay, thank you, Professor Ibrahim. Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, also, uh, welcome to uh, ICD member. And tonight we also have a, a collaborations with IPROSI or Indonesian Prostodontic Associations. So I would like to welcome to IPROSI member who also joined this webinar. And uh, I, my name is Ami Amelia and I will be your moderator for tonight. And our presentations uh, for today, our webinar will be uh, with the title will be about veneer preparations, less is more uh, by Dr. Kevin Kawilarang from Indonesia. So uh, allow me to read the CV of our speaker. Uh, Dr. Kevin C. Kawilarang, a prosthodontist specialist. He graduated from Erlanga University in Surabaya in 2015. And in 2019, he graduated from a prosthodontic specialist program from Gajah Mada University. And he has several experience as a speaker in many dental seminar in Indonesia. And also currently he's working at Haigi Dental in Yogyakarta. And today uh, the webinar uh, will consist of 45 minutes of presentations and also 15 minutes uh, for a question and answer sessions. So if you have any questions, uh, you can use the chat box or question and answer box, and we will read your questions after the end of the presentations. Um, okay, so without further ado, uh, I would like to welcome our speaker, Dr. Kevin. Hello, Dr. Kevin. Yeah, hello. Hello, Dr. Kevin. Good evening, me. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you hello, can start Dr. your <laughs> Hi, Kevin. Hi. <laughs> okay, Dr. Kevin, uh, you can start your presentations. Okay, yeah. Uh, let me share my screen first. Um, Uh, can you see my screen, doctor? Yes, doc. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I'll start the presentation. So, hi everyone. Uh, good evening. How are you? I hope everyone is healthy and also in a good condition. Uh, by the way, uh, right now is nine thirty p.m. in Indonesia, and I just finished my practice for today. Thank you for all of the dentists here that joining this webinar. And I also want to thanks to ICD, International College of Dentists, especially ICD section 15, right? And the uh, Professor Ibrahim as the head of committee. So, uh, yeah, let me show you, uh, my CV. So first I will introduce myself and my name is Dr. Kevin, specialist prosto. Uh, I was graduated from Erlanga University, Surabaya. And then I continue my study at Gajah Mada University, Yogyakarta to become a prostodontist. You can reach me at, this is my email. And also this is my Instagram page, Instagram account at Kevin C. Kawilarang. I posted a lot of uh, dental cases there because, you know, in Indonesia, Instagram is so popular and I think that's the best uh, social media platform. So I'll be so happy if you uh, take a look at my Instagram page. So this is where I work. Uh, I work at Haigi Dental to Jakarta and this is my team. We have a lot of dental specialists in this clinic. We have an endodontist, uh, I'm a surgeon, pedodontist, orthodontist, periodontist, and of course, we have 
me <laughs> as a prosthodontist. So uh, why there are so many stenosis specialists here? Because we want to give uh, the best treatment to our patients. So yeah, we give the patients treatment uh, based on our specialties. And as I said before that I live in Yogyakarta and I also work at Yogyakarta. Have you heard about this city? So uh, Yogyakarta is uh, one of the most, uh, one of the city in Indonesia uh, at Java Island. So it's known for the traditional art and also the cultural heritage. And we have the Royal Complex here and we call it the uh, Kraton. And also we have uh, our own king in this city. We call him uh, Sultan. So now you know that in Indonesia, it's not only about Bali. There are so many cities in Indonesia that's very beautiful and Yogyakarta is one of them. So if you have uh, opportunity to visit uh, Indonesia, please come and visit Yogyakarta. So uh, in this webinar, I want to share about maybe one of the most important and also the most frequently asked step in veneer treatment procedures. It's about veneer preparation. And the title of this presentation is veneer preparation, less is more. So how come less is more? So in the next 45 minutes, we will discuss all about that. But first, let me tell you that Veneers is not always success. Sometimes we fail, okay? Sometimes veneers fail. But do you know the reason number one why veneers fail? The reason number one why veneers fail is because too much preparation. When you've prepped too much, it means you didn't have any enough enamel on the third surface. And of course, that's make your veneers will fall off easily because, you know, uh, dancing bonding is not as good, is not as effective as the enamel bonding. Furthermore, if you prep too much, of course, the tooth will be more sensitive and that is not good for your patient and you will fail. So try to prep or try to make preparation as minimum as possible. Do you agree with me? Wait a minute. Let me tell you the reason number two, why veneers fail. So the reason number one is too much preparation, but the reason number two is to minimum preparation. Confused? Yes, yeah, so minimum preparation seems to be better, seems to be the best option, the golden standard for veneer preparation. But sometimes we prep just too little and that's make our dental technician, our dental lab doesn't have enough space for the restoration material itself. And that's make your veneers will be bulky, that makes your veneers will be not so aesthetic. And of course you will fail. So it's confusing, right? When you prep too much, you fail. When you prep to minimum, you fail. So what we have to do? Yeah, we have to prep, we have to reduce in the right thickness. Okay, not too much not too little. So the most common question is how deep is the best for veneer preparation? How many millimeters is the best for the veneer preparation? If you ask me that question, I cannot give you the answers. Why? Because every case or every tool, even in the same patient, it needs different preparation. It needs different type of preparation. It needs different thickness of the preparation. 
and also different design of the preparations. So yeah, it depends on the case that you work. Because preparation, it's not just a tooth reduction procedure. Okay, preparation, it's not just tooth reduction procedure. It's more procedure to provide enough space for the material restoration itself. So if you ask me how many millimeters that we have to provide, yeah, it depends on the material that you choose. If you want to make veneers with the, let's say the lithium desilicate or Emax material, at least you have to provide minimum 0 0.3 to 0 0.5 millimeters. Why? Because that's the minimum thickness of that kind of material. But to provide 0 0.5 millimeter space, sometimes we have to reduce not exactly at 0 0.5 millimeters. Okay? Sometimes we have to reduce more than 0 0.5. Sometimes we have to reduce less than 0 0.5 millimeter or sometimes we have to reduce exactly at 0 0.5 millimeter. How come? For the example, if you want to make veneers, let's say on the central incisor on the left and on the right central incisor. If the left central incisor is labioversion, is more labial, of course, you have to prep more than 0 0.5, I think. Why? Because you have to, you have to, you know, correct the inclination of the tooth. You have to correct the position. You have to make the final result of your veneers align. You want your veneers level, right? So yeah, I think you have to prep more than 0 0.5. On the other hand, if the left central incisor palatoversion, it's more palatal. I think you you don't have to prep 0 0.5. You can prep less than 0 0.5 because you have already enough space for that. But sometimes if the case already in a good condition, in a good position, good alignment, you can exactly reduce 0 0.5 to provide 0 0.5 millimeter space for the restriction material. And it's hard. How to know how many millimeters that we exactly need? So how to know that? There is only one way. We have to make mock-up. So we use the mock-up as a guidance for our preparation. So we will do the guided preparation by the mock-up. Okay? So what is mock-up? In general, mock-up is a full-size model of something large that has not yet been built, showing how it will look. Okay, let me say oh, one more time. Mock-up in general is a full-size model of something large that has not yet been built, showing how it will look. Okay, and so this is the quick step-by-step step on how to make mock-ups. So when your patients came to your clinic, you take a picture, you take a profile picture, intraoral picture, and et cetera, and then you scan the teeth of your patient. Okay. And after you scan it, you can make the design, okay? After you have the design, you can print it. So right now you have the 3D printing model. After you have the 3D printing model, you make the party index from, from that, okay? After you have the party index, you can fill it with the bisacral material or with the uh, temporary restoration, and then you put it back to the patient's mouth and you will have the mock-up, okay? And then you're ready to do the preparation. So for me, party index or mock-up, it's just like a Google Maps for veneer preparation. 
any doctors here that never heard about Google Maps or maybe never use it before? Yeah, I think uh, all of you have already used it, already know about what is Google Maps. Is it easy or is it helpful? Or maybe it makes you get lost in the woods. So as I remember, like maybe five years ago, when I first used the Google Maps, I got lost often. Why? Because I was not used to it. But now, even just for the daily drive, just drive around the city, maybe just go to the market or maybe go to the shopping mall around the city, I always use the Google Maps. Why? Because I think it's easier. I don't have to think about the traffic. I don't have to think about how can I go there? How can I go there? Just follow the instruction from the Google Maps. Just follow the guidance from the Google Maps. It's easy for me. And that's exactly what happened in veneer preparation. Okay. I used to think that party index mock-up, it's too complicated for me. It's too complex. And I think that, yeah, I don't really use it. I can do the preparation without it. I can do blind preparation, but I was wrong about that. Okay. I was wrong about that. Right now is the opposite. Even just to make only two units veneer or maybe four units veneer, I always use Google Maps. Uh, sorry, I always use the party index and also the mock-up. Why? Because party index and the mock-up is very important, is very crucial. And we conclude that party index and mock-up are Google Maps for the veneer preparation. So you then get lost. So you know how many millimeters that you have to prep. You know exactly the space that you need for the registration material. Okay. In the next slide, uh, I want to share about one of my indirect porcelain uh, veneer registration case in my clinic. But before that, let me show you about the veneer preparation designs. As you can see here, at least there are four types of veneer preparation designs. Okay, first is window preparation, second is feather preparation, third is bevel or butt joint preparation, and the fourth is incisal overlap preparation. Okay, what is window preparation? I think window preparation is the most popular one, but honestly, I never use it. Even this is the, the most famous maybe, uh, but I never use it. Window preparation, you just prep on the labial sides, but the incisal edge of the tooth is preserved. And the second preparation design is feather preparation. It's very similar with the window preparation the difference is the incisal edge of the tooth is prepared, but the incisal length is still not reduced. Okay, the third preparation design is bevel, or we call it butt joint preparation. This is my favorite. I think this is the only one uh, finger preparation design that I always use in almost of all my cases. Yeah, I mean, every preparation design must have their own strength, their own weakness, their own indications. But for me, bevel is the best. Bevel is the most favorite. And uh, what is bevel preparation? So in bevel preparation, we prepare the incisal edge. We reduce slightly 0 0.5 to one millimeters. I think one to two millimeters, it's still okay with the bevel preparation. And the last preparation design is incisal overlap preparation. This is similar with the bevel, but in incisal overlap preparation, there is extension preparation to the palatal sides of the tooth. 
and I think it's not really necessary, and I think it's too much preparation with this design, so I never use it. So why I use the bevel or incisal butt joint preparation? Because ceramic veneers with incisal butt joint offer several clinical advantages, okay, such as easier to preparation. Ceramic veneer fabrication also will be easier, better manipulation, and also easier for the insertion. That's why I use the incisal, incisal butt joint preparation. And if you want to make bevel or butt joint preparation, at least there are four sides of the tooth that you have to prep. Of course, it's not only on labial side, you have to make preparation at the labial side, the incisal side, the interproximal, and also the marginal side. Okay, so there are four sites that you have to prep labial, incisal, interproximal, and marginal, or we call it finishing line. Okay, to understand more, uh, I want to show you this case. So uh, this young lady came to our clinic uh, with this condition. So as you can see here, uh, she has already treated with the direct composite veneer before with her previous dentist, but uh, she was not satisfied with the results. So she asked her previous dentist to remove all of the direct uh, composite veneer. And this is the condition after she removed all of the direct composites. Of course, the patient was not satisfied. As you can see here, the surface of the tooth is very rough and yeah, it's not good for the patient. And then she came to uh, our clinic and then we discussed about her case and we decided to do the smile makeover with the porcelain veneers. Uh, from right second premolar to the left second premolar. So we made uh, 10 units veneers. I used the lithium desilicate or Emax restoration material. And the first appointment, we took a picture of the patient, the profile and etc. cetera, intraoral condition. And then we scanned the patient's teeth and then we make the digital design. After we have the design, we print it, and now we have the 3D printing model, and then we make the party index, as I said before, fill it with the bisacral material, temporary material, and then put it back to the patient's mouth, and we have the mock-up. Okay, after we have the mock-up, and then we continue to do the veneer preparation. Okay, so first step on the preparation step is to make preparation with the depth marker burr. Okay, so there are at least uh, three types of uh, depth marker burr based on their diameters. There are 0 0.3 millimeters, 0 0.4, and also 0 0.5. In this case, I use the smallest one, the 0 0.3 millimeters. And this is the condition after the first preparation with the deep marker burr, 0.3 millimeters. And then uh, each of the grooves, we mark it with a pencil as a stopper. So then we know where we have to stop our preparation. Okay, because the next step, we did the surface preparation with the round and tapered burr, or we call it the chamfer burr. Basically, we remove all of the mock-up material with this burr until the mark with the pencil is gone. Okay, just like this. So what you have to do if after you clean, if you after you remove all of the mock-up material and you you and then the the mark of your pencil is gone but you still found the excess mock-up material what you have to do just clean it don't use burr just use the maybe explorer or plastic filling or any instrument but not with the burr 
Okay, just clean it and this is the result. So uh, this is the initial preparation. This is the initial condition after the initial preparation with the depth marker burr, 0 0.3 millimeters. So at this step, we have provide 0 0.3 millimeters for the restoration material. And then we check with the path index to evaluate our preparation. So uh, what do you think about this preparation? Is this enough? Of course, it's not. We have to make another preparation. We have to make preparation on the other side. As I said before, we have to prep not only at labial site, we have to prep on incisal, marginal, and also interproximal. So there are four sites that you have to prep. Labial, incisal, marginal, and interproximal. So the next step is incisal preparation. How many millimeters? 0 0.5, 1, 1.5, 2 millimeter, it's still okay. What's the purpose of that? To make the stronger restorations, to make the preparation more simple, to make easier sitting of multiple veneers, and to eliminate the risk for fracture of thin and unsupported palatal ceramic ledge. And there is one more purpose of incisal reduction. That's the aesthetic purpose. Okay, so if you reduce, if you give the space like one to two millimeters incisal space, it makes your dental technician easier to make your veneers more natural because they have space to make the microanatomy, they have space to make the mammalon and also the translucency effect and etc. And of course, that's make your veneers will be more natural, will be better. And the next step is margin preparation, or we call it finishing line preparation. So in this case, I make the chamfer finishing line. So why chamfer? From the laboratory perspective, it's, it is extremely beneficial for the dentist to place at least light chamfer finishing line. Okay, so it's similar with crown preparation, but in veneers preparation, you can prep lighter. Okay, just light chamfer finishing line so that the term is so that your dental technician clearly knows where to build the porcelain. Okay, so after you make the margin preparation, you make the final preparation of the labial sites, probably like 0 0.2 millimeters. Shit. Sorry, uh, my screen is freezed. Uh, Okay, sorry. <laughs> so uh, the next step, uh, final preparation, uh, probably 0 0.2 millimeters. And if you, if you uh, calculate uh, the first preparation, you use the depth marker burr for 0 0.3 millimeters. And then the final preparation, you make the chamfer burr, you prep 0 0.2 millimeters. And if you calculate it total, you have provided 0.5 millimeters for the restoration material. Okay, the last step, uh, interproximal preparation. In interproximal preparation, you can maintain or you can open or you can slice the interproximal contact. In this case, uh, I maintain the contact, but I use the interproximal strip 
just to open a little bit interproximal contact for each teeth. And this is the final result of the preparation. Yeah, so this is the summary of the preparation. For the labial preparation, uh, we reduce 0.5 millimeters and incisal preparation, one to two millimeters. And then we maintain the interproximal contact and we make the chamber finishing line. And the last step, we check our preparation with the PATI index. Okay, we evaluate our preparation. As you can see here, we have provided at least 0.5 millimeters each step for the veneers material. And this is the final result. So the left picture is the initial condition of this patient. And the right picture is the final result. And I want to show you another example of the preparation. Uh, the left preparation and the right preparation. Which one do you think it's better? The left preparation is less preparation than the right. So is that better? Just take a look at the red circles here and also here. Okay. The left preparation, I think uh, we still not give the, 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 the enough space for the restoration material, especially in the interproximal area. So if you make that kind of preparation, like in the left side, the yellow one, the result will be like this. Of course, it's not aesthetic, it's not good. As you can see here, the surface is like more flat and you know not so aesthetic, bulky, and there is no line angle from this preparation. Okay, it's very different with the other one. Okay, the key is the preparation. So as you can see here, the right preparation you give the enough space for the material restoration and the left preparation, it's not enough space, especially in the proximal area. So you think that less preparation is always better? For me, it's not really. And this is the conclusion of this webinar. So less or minimum preparation, it's not enough, of course. We have to know exactly how many millimeters that we have to, 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 to reduce for better restoration, better result, okay? And then understand every little details of veneer preparation, it's so important. And the mock-up, mock-up is Google Maps for the veneer preparation. So, less is more it means more difficult to prep of course uh with minimum preparation it means you have to to be more selective when you do the preparation it's more difficult to cement thinner restoration it's harder to be cemented and also it's harder to make the provisional and the last it's more difficult for our than the lab to fabricate the restoration. But I think it's all worth it. Okay, so I think that's all. And I hope that this presentation can give you a lot of insight about the injury restoration for veneers. Thank you very much for your attention. Okay, thank you, uh, Dr. Kevin. Thank you, Dr. Rami. Uh, so, uh, thank you for the very wonderful uh, informative presentations. So, as a conclusion, uh, for veneer restorations, your favorite uh, preparation is, is butt joint uh, for incisal edge preparations. And also, it is very important to do the mock-up. And you also, uh, 
minimal preparation is not always the, the better choice, right? Okay, so uh, we will uh, continue to our next sessions, which is a question and answer sessions. Uh, you can chat, uh, see in the chat box or in the question and answer, there are some questions. Uh, so first I will address uh, the first questions. Uh, it's in the question and answer box. So the first question is from Febrina Rina, Dr. Febrina Rina. So she asked you, uh, when you prep the labial surface uh, using the pencil marker, using round and taper board, do you prep those with or without water? Okay, so okay. maybe you want to address this one first? Yeah, okay. Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Febrina, for the question. When you prep the labial surface, you prep those with yeah, of course, I prep with the water, but when I take the picture, yeah, I make it dry first, then I take the photo of that. But with water, of course, with water. And the next question is Doctor uh, from Dr. Febrina. Uh, when do we decide the mock-up? Uh, make only on the study model rather than on the patient teeth itself? Or is it? Yeah, also, so the... F uh... First, you have to make the design, and then after you have the design, or sometimes we call it the wax up. And after we have mock, uh, wax up, then we transfer it to the patient's mouth, and that's called mock up. So wax up and mock up, it's like a different, different kind, you know. Okay, um, so next questions. Um, there's no name for from this participant. Uh, he's asking, may I ask, what's the cement protocol of the veneer? Yeah, okay, uh, thank you for the question. And uh, the cement protocol, yeah, I use the light cure cement uh, because I think that the light cure cement is always better when you do the veneer. Don't use the dual cure cement. Uh, for me, uh, light cure cement is the best for the veneer cementation, and I did... Uh, multiple cementation so i did not uh cement like one by one i i do the cementation uh, step all of the veneers i cemented in the same time okay and the next question is how do you temporize the veneers okay uh temporize the veneers yeah uh so the temp the temporize the veneers so uh okay okay temporary veneer yeah uh how i make the temporary veneer it's just the same same step with i make the mock-up just the same use the, the the same design use the same material i use the base this acryl you know it's like a combination of the acrylic and the composites yeah just fill it with, with uh fill in the party index put it back to the patient's mouth and then it's done you have the mock-up you have the temporary it's just the same same step. Okay, the next question is for from Dr. Kim Yoon. Did you give LA every prep? Yes, <laughs> almost every preparation. I I make the uh I give patients the local anesthetic. That's make uh my patients more comfortable. For me, also more comfortable <laughs> to make the patients numb. Okay. Um, the next questions, uh, may I know where do you place the margin? Either it's equigenifal or sub or super genifal. Okay, so basically it's depend on the case, but first I will try to do the equigenifal uh, margin preparation because I think equigenifal it's the safest <laughs> preparation. You know, you, you, yeah, I think it's the, the, the best for, for the veneers, for the cementation is also better, for, for the impression it will be better, it will be easier. Yeah, I'll try at my best to do the equiking if a margin preparation. Okay, and does veneer prep need IDS? Yeah, uh, the answer is depend on the case. So if you prep and you stop at NML, I think you don't need the IDS because IDS is immediate dentin sealing. So if you prep and if your preparation stop at enamel, I think you don't have to make it, you don't have to do IDS. But if your preparation stop at dentin, you should do the IDS, of course. 
Okay, uh, the next question is from Dr. Tisifa. Uh, your mock-up objective is to get optimal alignment. Do you make pre-adjustment for my more aligned teeth that need to be reduced prior to making the scan? And do you make more reductions for dark teeth that need to be improved for final higher value? Yes, that is, yes, yes. That's right, that's right. So uh, for the mal -align mal alignment teeth, yeah, it depends on the case. Uh, so veneers is not for all of the cases. If there is uh, too much misalignment, yeah, we cannot do veneers first. We need to do the orthodontic treatment first. But uh, if the, the misalignment is just little, we can do the veneer procedure. We can do the veneer treatment. And for the darker teeth, yeah, yeah, we can. Uh, Actually, we can do the the uh, you know the internal bleaching first for the darker teeth. Okay. Uh, the next question is from Dr. Julie C. Uh, may I know? Do you do spot edge and bone for temporary veneers? Yes. Uh, yeah. Every case for veneers, I do the spot edge and spot bone for temporary veneers. It makes uh, my temporary will be uh, stronger and not fall off easily. Yeah, spot adds spot one for temporary. Okay, uh, the next question. Uh, we check our labial and incisal preparations from the mock-up. How to check the cervical area preparations? Uh, yeah, uh, for the cervical area, I think you can use the PATI index you slice it like in horizontal or vertical. V vertical, I think, vertical way. <laughs> and then you see from uh, from the sides and you can see the, the, the cervical area, how many millimeters that you need, how many millimeters that you already prepped. Yeah, you can you can see it from, from the patty index. Okay, um, the next question is from Dr. Nazarin. Uh, thank you for your wonderful presentations. And do you prescribe splint to protect the restoration post-operative? And if yes, what is uh, what kind of splint? Is it soft, hard, or bilaminar? Bilami yeah. Okay. Uh, for post-operative veneers, um, yeah, all of my patient, I will give my patient. Uh, we call it not splint in Indonesia. We call it the night guard, maybe. And for the veneers treatment. Uh, I think soft is better because it makes your patient more comfortable. But the, the important point is to make the night guard, especially for the multiple veneers. Okay. Uh, the next question is, you already mentioned uh, the cement that you recommend to use for the veneers. Yeah, I use the light cure cement. It's okay. better for veneers. And uh, so next question is from the chat box. Uh, the first question is, is from Dr. Punrie from Cambodia. Uh, the question is, how do you make sure that the digital design can match with the macro aesthetic? Do you use any 2D as a guided design before 3D? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh... 3D design, sometimes it's not always uh, match with the patient. Sometimes patient like not so satisfied with the result. We can do the correction directly on the patient's mouth with the flowable composites. We can change the form. We can uh, do the, you know, uh, modification. We can do the modification of the, the design uh, inside the patient's mouth directly. I think it's, that's the, best way I think so the patients can see directly the result and if you, the patient already satisfied then we can make the impression from the final mock-up and you and we use that that mock-up for the preparation guidance not the first one but the last one okay uh, so the next question is also in the chat box um uh, dear doctor, if the tooth is more bulkier than the mock-up, do we need any ameloplasty before handing the order to try in the mock-up? Yes, correct. Correct. 
And it's also the same uh, question about cement protocols. Would you do more elaborate or? Sorry. Okay. Uh, we just uh, you already answer about the cement ah, protocol, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so uh, the next question is from Dr. Horn with Vito. How do we try in or fabricate the mock-up if the baseline teeth is more bulkier than the mock-up? Yeah, uh, same with the yeah, we have to do Yeah, yeah, yeah. So oh, okay. yeah, we need to do the so-called ameloplast amelo and ameloplasty, sorry. And ameloplasty first. Yes. Um what what are what are the factors that cause veneers to fall off in the same place? The next question. Oh. Uh, yeah, so you know that that uh, veneers, uh, it depends on the enamel. So enamel bonding is the best for the veneer cementation. So why the veneers fall off easily? Uh, the most common uh, problem is because you prep too much, so you don't have any enamel in the tooth surface, not enough enamel in the tooth surface, and that's make uh, the, you don't have uh, not good enamel bonding. Okay, uh, and another question. Uh, can we use normal shade guide to take the stunt shape? It's in the chat. Yeah, box. yeah, yeah. You can use the, 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 the normal shade guide. I use the, the most conventional one, the Fita Classic. <laughs> I think that's the the most simple, the most easiest one. Okay, uh, we still have time. So there is a um, more question in the question and answer box. Uh, it's from Dr. Bafna Nahata uh, from Cambodia. So uh, the webinar was really insightful and great learning experience. Thank you, Dr. Kevin. And the, my question is, what about the cases with rotated lateral incisor? Do we first correct the alignment or is there any alternative? Uh, the best way is to do the orthodontic treatment first, I think. But it depends on your patient's condition. Yeah, different patient, different treatment plan. If you calculate, if you... Yeah, yeah, the orthodontic first, I think. Orthodontic first. Okay, so ah, there's another question. How long do ceramic yeah. veneer last? Yeah, it depends. <laughs> it depends on how you use the porcelain veneers. Five years, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years. Yeah, it can survive. Okay. Um, so if there is no more question, Okay, there's no more questions. So I will uh, end this uh, webinar for tonight. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Kevin. Thank for you. For a very great, wonderful and presentations. And thank you to all the participants. And I will give back uh, the floor to Dr. Professor Ibrahim. Professor Ibrahim. Okay, thank you, Amy. Uh, thank you, Amy, uh, for moderating the session tonight. And also thank you to Dr. Kevin for sharing expertise with our participants tonight. And tonight we got about more than 200 participants who has logged in to listen to your lecture, Dr. Kevin. Again, on behalf of Section 15, uh, we would like to thank you uh, for you to come and share your experience with us. And you got a lot of questions to answer tonight. <laughs> uh, I think the most of in our webinar, I think the number of questions that we, uh, we face in the webinar. Thank you again. Uh, it looks like the topic is very interesting. That's why people come and ask questions. Eh? If uh, if it's not if it's so quiet, you might be worried why people don't understand or what you are talking about. Anyway, thank you again, Dr. Kevin. Uh, as yeah, usual, thank you, Professor uh, Ibrahim. As usual, uh, we will thank all uh, you for sharing, and we will send you uh, your certificate to you soon. Okay, thank you, Kevin. All right, uh, again, uh, as usual, and for. Um, uh, our material, I will make an announcement for the uh, our October webinar. 
the topic is uh, avoiding pitfalls and managing complications in fixed orthodontics. Okay, this is uh, by uh, Professor Dr. Xiao Liang Lin. Professor Xiao Liang Lin is the Dean of International Medical uh, Faculty of Dentistry, International Medical University of Malaysia. And again, this workshop, uh, this webinar will be in conjunction with Emprosi of Indonesia. So do join us on the 12th of October, uh, same time for the October webinar with Professor Dr. Xiao Liang Lin. Thank you very much for joining us and see you all again in one month's time. Good night and bye-bye. Bye-bye, uh, right. uh, Amy. And thank you, Amy and uh, Latin Mayuna for uh, morning, uh, helping the session tonight. Thank you. I don't know. Uh, Okay, Dan, thank you.